Good morning, everyone. For those of you who thought you were going to be seeing Pastor Chuck this morning, instead you've got me. And I'm Pastor Ed Hendricks. Um, I'm a, a friend of Pastor Chuck's, and uh, we have worked together in the past, and perhaps you've seen me on another of his uh, YouTube videos. And I appreciate, as always, uh, Pastor Chuck and has trusted me and the involvement of the Holy Spirit and what we have to share today. Today, we're going to talk about a gospel that's familiar to all of us, and it's familiar because three of the four evangelists, those are the people that wrote the gospels, actually included this story. So it must be very, very important for us to understand if, if three of them put it into their gospels. There has to be something special about it. Today, we're going to read from uh, Mark's version. We're going to be reading Mark uh, chapter 10, verses uh, 17 to um, 31. It's the rich young man, a story that, as I said, is familiar to all of us and, and which we all can, can relate to, I believe. It's a story of, as Jesus started on his journey, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit inter eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept. Since I was a boy, Jesus looked at him and he loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And then Peter spoke up. We have left everything to follow you. <laughs> Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers and sisters, or mother or father, or children, or fields, for regard of the gospel, will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age, homes and brothers and sisters, mother and children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. The gospel of Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wow. Sell all you have and then you can follow me. Kind of threatening, isn't it? Suppose that um, you were sitting in your house one day and just a knock on the door. And you get up and you walk over to the door and standing there and you immediately recognize him is Jesus. Jesus says, can I come in? And what's your first reaction? Uh, I don't know, for many of us, and myself probably included, I'd have to say, uh, yeah, but just give me a minute. Uh, let me, I, gotta, I know I have a Bible somewhere around. Um, let, me, let, me, let me dig it out from wherever I have it hidden and, and put it out and let me hide some of those magazines that I, I wish you might not see and, and, and I'll get rid of them. And, uh, uh, and then you can come in and um, 
oh gosh, I hope I don't get a phone call today because I know who might be calling. And I just can't help myself when that person calls. I, I start using language that I, I don't normally use because they, oh my gosh. Uh, hang on, Jesus. I, I, I just, 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 just another minute and all these thoughts are going through your head. Oh, 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 oh. Um, what if he asks to see my, my cell phone and my, 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 my search history? What if he asks to, to see my texts? Uh, um, um, what if, what if what, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know, Jesus. I, I keep praying that you'll come, but I, I'd like a little notice next time. And Jesus said, don't worry about it. Just let me in. Well, okay. And Jesus walks in, and he looks around your house and said, boy, you've got some pretty nice stuff here. I see that you've got a computer, you've got all kinds of things. You know, most of my followers didn't have those things. And, and, they got along fine without them. How about how about you? Can you get along without your technology? Can you get along without your television? Can you get along without playing that you're someone in one situation and pretending to be someone else in another situation? Can you give up everything to follow me? You know, the rich young man came up and said, I followed all the rules. Look, you know, as a, as a Jewish guy, I, I, I went through all of the training I needed. I went through all of the Hebrew school. I learned the scriptures. Not only did I memorize the scriptures, but I can read the scriptures, Jesus. And I followed the rules, um, you know, as, as best I could. You know, I'll, I'll tell, you, tell you that I did everything perfectly. But, you know, maybe there were a couple of things. But, um, you know, but you're, you're asking me to give up some stuff that I really think I need like you know I, I it's taken me a long time to accumulate this money my father started putting together this fortune and I, I you know I, I just can't give it away um kind of like us would, would say you know Jesus you want me to sell my 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 car and and give the money to 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 your missions Jesus you want me to to get rid of my technology and 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 be in the the dark if you will except for reading the gospels come on jesus that's a that's a little bit rough to ask that's the same thing this man was going through he said i i i followed all the rules but how can i earn my way into heaven and i think many of us have that same idea that that somehow we have to earn our way into heaven and jesus says you know Following the rules is not enough. You know, we have to realize that salvation is by God alone. And it's a gift from God. And that gift is called grace. We can't buy it. No matter how much money we may have, no matter how many things we have accumulated. You know, we spend our lives trying to accumulate things and I don't know about you, but I've never seen a U-Haul hooked to a hearse. You don't get to take it with you. But we're so attached to it. And Jesus said, we have to be ready to let go of the things that hold us to this world if we want to have life eternal in the next. It's hard for people because being saved is not grace given wantonly. It's not permission to live any way we want, to do whatever we want, knowing that through this grace, we have been saved. It requires that we also live and follow God's commandments, but also that we live according to his ways. We have to be willing to let go of everything. For some of us, that may mean letting go of everything as it did for the apostles. They gave up their homes, they gave up their, their wives, their families, they gave up everything. But Jesus assured them that they will receive back a hundredfold in this lifetime, everything they gave up. And on top of that, they will have eternal life. So we know the commandments, just like the rich young man did. But how well do we follow them? 
Do we place God above everything else? The reason it's so hard for a, a rich person, as Jesus calls it, to have wealth and get into heaven is because it's so hard to let go of things that we consider to be wealth here on earth. You know, the story about the camel through the eye of the needle. There used to be a, a stories going around that one of the gates into Jerusalem was called the needle's eye and it was very narrow. And for a, a camel that was laden down with baggage, could not get through that gate without first letting go of the baggage so the camel could walk through and then porters would pick up the bags, walk them through the gate and reload the camel. Well, it's never been fully proven that there was such a gate that was called the eye of the needle. But nonetheless, the camel was the largest animal known to most of the people in that part of the world at that time. They had not seen elephants. And so the camel was the largest animal most of them had ever seen. And so they could relate to a camel. And they could also relate to the eye of a needle. They know how to sew. And so they could image and imagine this camel trying to get through the eye of a needle, how hard it would be. And Jesus said, if we don't let go of the things that are keeping us from following him, we're going to have the same amount of difficulty getting into heaven as a camel would passing through the eye of a needle. It doesn't mean that God is going to call you to give up everything you have. But it does mean that you must be willing to if he does. How about your prayer life? Do you read and study scripture? Or do you simply keep a Bible around in case Jesus shows up at your door one day and you can hide all the magazines you don't want him to see and put the Bible out instead? Do you even know where your Bible is? I'm sure a lot of us have, have a Bible around the house someplace. We're just not sure where it is. Um, how about do we love and respect our parents? Do we love and respect our children? Do we love and respect every human being? You know, we don't have to agree with them all the time. We don't have to agree with their choices. We don't have to agree with the choices that our children make. But we have to accept their right to make them. In the same way that we have the right to make choices to follow Jesus, even if our families don't understand. Remember, Jesus' own family didn't understand Earlier in Mark's gospel, we read that they thought he was out of his mind when he first started his ministry. When I first decided to become an ordained pastor, my brother called me on the phone and said, do you know how stupid you are? Our family may not understand our decision to follow Jesus, but God does. And if we want eternal life, and so the good we have to do is to live according to God's ways can be found in the prophet Micah. Prophet Micah, chapter 6, verse 8, where it says, Belonging to God, obeying him, and walking in humility with him, and doing justice and in loving kindness. This is what it means to follow Jesus. He's at your door. Are you ready to respond when he says, come, follow me, and I will lead you to eternal life? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the message today. We thank you for challenging us to reflect on what truly is important in our lives. We thank you for challenging us to keep you and our Heavenly Father at the forefront of all of our thoughts. We have so many things in our calendars, so many checks that we have written in our checkbook. But where your time and talent is, where your time and your money is, that's generally where your heart goes. And so if we look at our calendars, do we have time on there for you, Lord? Do we actually book time to spend with you? Do we book time on our calendar each morning, even if it means getting up a little bit earlier to pray?
Do we book time at the end of the day to thank you for letting us have that day? Yes, with all of its trials and everything that came that way, but it's all part of your plan, Lord. Do we look at our checkbook and see that we have donated in the proper way to our church, to other things that serve people in ways that we may not be able to, to reach them? Where do we spend our time and talent and treasure? Help us to spend them on you because you are the way, the truth, and the life. And that life is eternal life. Amen. God bless people. And thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>